It's got bells on. This Boxing Day afternoon from one, here on BBC Radio Guernsey. That's a cracker. This is BBC Radio Guernsey. I'm JKT. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. I've got a lovely book in my hands called Five Years... Start again, Jennifer. Can't even read now. 500 Years of Island Life by Peter Liu. And I just turned randomly to page 149 and it goes like this. The century not only saw this great artist and two visits by our Queen, but the island also hosted the great writer, Victor Hugo. In exile and seeking refuge from Napoleon III, Hugo lived in Hauteville for 15 years from 1855. During this time, he created his famous works, Toilers of the Sea and Les Miserables, which some say were his finest achievements, and he commenced or completed most of his other notable works while living in his comfortable townhouse. Toilers of the Sea was dedicated to our island and features a shipwreck on the Roche Duve Reef. It brings to life the challenges we islanders faced as the age of steam engines and industry threatened to engulf us. The view from his study, perched at the top of number 38, Rue Hauteville, extends across to his native France. And on a clear, sunny day, he must have seen occasional reflections off the glass of French houses, a poignant reminder of his refugee status. My view is less expansive, and I'll take a stroll later down to Southside to watch the progress at Ogier's Yard. Fewer ships are being constructed these days than in our prime, due in no small part to the demand for iron hulls, something that is beyond our engineering to construct economically here. But new vessels continue to be made, and older ones return for repairs and refits. One that won't return to this yard for maintenance is the Golden Spur, which, at 200 feet along the waterline and over 650 tonnes, was the largest vessel to be made in the island. She went down on the rocks in the Far East, but, by God's grace, without any loss of lives. In common with other clippers, she was designed to be very fast, carrying tea from China. At present, a more modest brigantine is in the dry dock and the yard is busy about caulking with tar and oakum as well as upgrading her knees to iron. The years of brickmaking have done for my joints and I must satisfy myself as an onlooker at the labours of others. But when I take my pew in church every Sunday, I give thanks for the blessings in my life. My labours have provided well for us. I had 32 years of marriage to Suzanne and there is our wonderful family and friends. I hope that our children are as fortunate and our grandchildren. What will the next century hold for them? The author is Mr Peter Liu and he joins me on the line now. He's a former Guernsey resident. Indeed, Peter, what will the next century hold for us? Hello. Hello, Jenny. That was very well read. Uh, read. I'm, I'm wondering if you do audio books for me. <laughs> uh, for a fee. <laughs> usually usually crates of gin, Peter, but no, thank you very much indeed. And it's a wonderful book. What made you write it? Um, well, when I was younger, I didn't pay very much attention to the my older generation of, of parents and relations and the family. And um, it occurred to me that when those relations, I got a bit older and those relations started to pass away, and in fact, my own parents passed away, that I was just losing all of the record of our family. And I wanted to do something about that, um, primarily for my own grandchildren, but I wanted also to create something which would be of interest to anybody that was interested in our local history. Well, this is fortuitous because just before the uh, midday news, we were listening to Christmas reminiscences from the elderly folk at the St John's Residential Care Home. And one of them, Rosemary, was clutching to her bosom a piece of or a set of papers. And it turned out on my questioning her that this was the most precious possession she has. And it was memoirs that her father had written about Christmas. Well, about lots of things, but in, in this context, Christmas in the build up to the First World War. And I said to Rosemary then, it begs the question, why don't more Guernsey families write things down for future generations? So this is exactly what you've done. Yes, um, there was quite a lot of information that um, I'd been told, just little pieces of information, like a story from my grandfather when he was young and, and had to take a, the horse and cart across the coupe in Sark, and stories about my great-grandfather. And, and, of course, Pierre, who um, you wrote, you, you read about just now, who um, originally owned the Queen's, the Queen's Hotel in oh. um, And it's 
there were things like that which I, I'd had pieces told to me over my life and I was forgetting them. I, um, I knew that if, you know, when I went, if I didn't pass them on to my family, they'd just get lost completely. So I thought, well, you know, let's make it, let's make a record of it. And I thought about, first of all, you know, the genealogy, because I'm, I'm not an expert in genealogy. I'm not an expert in local history. I'm not really an expert in much, <laughs> but, but I got a great deal of help from people locally. Um, researchers like Terry Dowington, uh, Elizabeth Hutchins, Gabrielle Lacroix and Dinah Bott locally who did all of the genealogical research for me along with some input from other researchers even as far afield in Aust as Australia and New Zealand. Um, and we got all of that side with their help. We managed to establish the family line all the way back to uh, the first Nicholas in, in, in 1445. So we we had a, a, a very long record of every generation. So um, you've written through the eyes of some of these people. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't want a, a, a straightforward genealogical account. I wanted to try and bring them to life. And so I wrote it in first person, present tense, in order to give each generation a voice, each ancestor a voice. Which makes it all the more pertinent for people with surnames other than Liu as well, because uh, it is called 500 Years of Island Life, and it's about your ancestors, but it doesn't matter, because flicking through the book, there are all sorts of wonderful Guernsey memories. It's going to appeal to everyone in the bailiwick, particularly, I think, to expats as well, who no longer live on Guernsey, just like yourself. What did you do while you were here, Peter? Um, well, I've been backward and forwards to the island quite a few times um, because, I mean, I started off, my, I was born in the UK because my dad left the island to fight in the war um, and he couldn't make it back until I was about 12. Um, so I came back, I, I first started living locally when I was 12 and I lived there until my late teens. Then I went back to the UK. Then I came back to the island again for a number of years and, and, and worked in what was then PA Associates, um, it was the Microfilm Bureau. Um, then I left again for a, for a number of years and came back and I was last there about eight years ago working for ITEX, that was. <laughs> um, and so I was in the IT industry. Um, and then I've been back here really because my family's all over here now, which is a bit ironic considering the book that I've just written. Um, but. Um, I, you know, I'd love to be back in the island, but I also love my family and I need to be near them as well. There's some wonderful photographs in the back of the book as well. Lots of uh, memories of various different elements of Guernsey life and uh, some old Guernsey photographs as well. It really is a, a joy to, to behold, including a couple related to the Royal Yacht Britannia, which we remember so fondly coming into waters just outside St Peterport. Yeah, that that is one of the most or was one of the most memorable days of my life. It was in 1957, and my grandfather had been working on an old steam cutter, and he was the stoker on it because he'd been a stoker in the navy. And um, he took us out to um, to meet the the Britannia, and we went out there, and it, he parked his little steam horn and everything. <laughs> and I think that was. You know, that began for me a love affair with boats that I've had all through my life, right up to this day, I still have. I just absolutely adored that old boat and that day out going around. And the story was, and I can't really remember because I'm only seven, but um, he blew the whistle on our little steam cutter and the Britannia replied. Oh, fantastic. Might have been a coincidence, but... <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Not to a small boy, though. Uh, just wonderful. And you, you talk about the tomato industry, you talk about tectronics, you talk about the little theatre in this book. It is just wonderful. Um, I don't know whether it's... Is it for sale in the island? Well, it's um, it's for sale online through Amazon. Yes. Um, it's available to borrow from the Prio Library. And um, if any local bookstores want to, to, to take stock, they can get that from... Um, my publishing website, acclaimedbooks.com. So that's so, what is it? Acclaimedbooks.com. But you can get it. It's called 500 Years of Island Life by Peter Liu. 
I'm not sure you might if you place an order today on that well-known um, sales online site, Amazon, in other words. Um, <coughs> I think you might possibly get a delivery before Christmas if you're very lucky. Not sure, but you might try it or uh, maybe save it for a little bit of January reading. It's just wonderful. Um, you've also published another novel called Rachel's Shoe. What was that about? Yes, in fact, you won't remember this, Jenny, but I did speak to you about it back when I oh, published that. Oh, forgive me, Peter. I, I talked to so many <laughs> authors. Of course you do. Um, yeah, you were very kind in, in interviewing me about that as well. And it, uh, it was back in 2008. It was a story. It was a fictional account of somebody who was um, a young person that was rescued off um, Alderney, a Jewish girl, um, by a local lad and um, their life together and uh, how they how she eventually escaped the island and um, yeah it was a, it was a bit of a thriller it came out it was <laughs> exactly the same year as the Guernsey literary and potato peel pie book came out which had rather more money than the publisher that I had at the time and um, it was quite interesting because my initial reaction was I was a bit disappointed that an another famous book had come out about that period on the island at exactly the same time but then of course that book created such a stir that um, a lot of people ended up wanting to know more about the occupation, especially in America, where they didn't really know that it had even happened. Well, we've, we've heard, we've just interviewed uh, an author in the last few days called Lara Dearman, who's with a fantastic publisher. She's got an amazing editor. Um, she's already sold the rights, I think, to ITV for her book. It's called The Devil's Claw. And oh, yes. it's it sounds fantastic, but she she now she's she's from Guernsey. She used to go to the ladies' college, and she now lives in New York City with her husband. And um, she she said that every time she mentions she's from Guernsey, American people actually say, "Gee, hold on a minute." They call their mum and say, "I'm actually speaking to someone from Guernsey." So you can tell yeah. how how important Guernsey is to to the wider audience, and perhaps you might get some tourists off the back of it if we can sort one or two blips out. Um, no, go, move on Jen before you get heated now, um, <laughs> Peter I just before you go I want to ask you if you miss Guernsey at Christmas time oh yeah I miss Guernsey all the time I love the island um, and especially um, at Christmas but I, I guess probably more in the spring you know walks on the cliffs and things like that it's, it's such a beautiful island you're also incredibly lucky to live there um, I would be there myself if it wasn't for family commitments, but I get over quite a lot. I'm coming over in the spring on my boat and spending a number of weeks in the island. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a shame I can't live there, but at least I can get there quite easily with my boat. So um, it's not too, too bad. <laughs> well, when you're over on your boat, why don't you come and see me? I'd love to, And yes. spend some time in the studio. That would be yes. fantastic. Well, you've spoken to my wonderful producer, Mr Darren Razier. Um, yes. I, I'm saying that even though he's been quite mean and horrid to me today. Yeah, um, I heard his earlier comment. <laughs> I don't know. And Ollie as well. I'm sure it's all your own hair, Jenny. My, thank you, darling. Thank you. Yes, it is. Yes, it's not a wig. Um, but yeah, Darren, will will sort you out and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you a nice cup of coffee and bring some biscuits over with you and we'll have a nice chin wag on the programme. Will do. I look forward to it. I look forward to it too. For the moment, Peter, Liu and family, a very happy Christmas from all of us here in Guernsey. And thank you very much for telling us about your new book, 500 Years of Island Life, available online, or you can borrow a copy from the Gilorle Library. Peter, Liu, thank you very much indeed. A pleasure. Bye. Bye for now. That's Peter Liu there, the author of Rachel's Shoe, his debut novel, which came out in 2008. And now you've got this one, which is just gorgeous. It's called 500 Years of Island Life. And you can get it from Amazon. And you can also borrow, borrow a copy, as I've said, from the Guy Lawley Library. And it really is it's going to appeal to so many people who love Guernsey, I can't tell you. This is BBC Radio Guernsey. At your service. At Christmas time. Mm. 